debuted last Wednesday in Indiana, and he repeated his production. He scored 22 points against the Blazers while playing nearly 40 minutes. And then, KD, he had 28 points in 42 minutes. So he has now had 11 straight games scoring at least 25. That's the second longest such streak in Nets history behind his own 12-game streak from last season. But... Not all things are good for the Nets. They lost to the Blazers. That's without Damian Lillard, without CJ McCollum. And Brooklyn has now lost five of their last seven games. So here's KD on his minutes load after that game. Are you concerned at all about the workload that you put in so far today? No. Let me die out there. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not concerned. But whenever the coach... Uh, want to give me a day, then, you know, I'll support it, but I'm not looking for one. You get what I'm saying? So I'm going to just play until they tell me that I'm sitting up. You know? But that's not on my mind when I'm playing. That's not on my mind when I'm going into a game, preparing for a game. It is what it is. I got to play 40. I got to play, so what? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to play. But if they tell me to sit out, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, dang, I'm going to die out there. Well, with that, I'd like to welcome in J.J. Reddick. So, J.J., do you think the Nets are Kevin Durant right now? Well, I, I think they should definitely be concerned with his minutes. But as you guys just talked about, Kevin Durant is a superstar. He's yes, a max he player. There's inherently going to be pressure on him. That has been exasperated this season for a few reasons. First of all, COVID, injuries. But really, the Nets have an unbalanced roster. They have three superstars or... Whatever the criteria is, guys, <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. But they have three star players. And then after that, there's this pretty significant drop off. And, uh, you know, because of Kyrie being only, only being available for two games all season, he's had to shoulder more minutes. Um, but look, his usage rate is slightly above his career average. It's not like when he's on the court, he's doing more than he, he normally does. The, the Nets are in the middle of five games in seven days right now. There's not a break in sight. They don't have a two-game break or two-day break in between games until January 27th and 28th. And then they go back out west for another long road trip. So there's really no end in sight for this team until you get to the All-Star break. Well, and James Harden didn't play, so it already seems that they're staggering their stars. But with KD and Harden, like we just saw in that graphic, they rank in the top three in minutes per game along with Fred Van Vliet, who's number one. Is this sustainable for the entire season? This is the benefit of, of bringing Kyrie back for road games. Um, if I'm the Nets, my strategy would be if, <laughs> look, if, if those three guys are healthy uh, for a road game, we're picking one of them to sit out the game and get some rest. Um, and certainly as you get past the All-Star break, you can be even more strategic and, and look for opportunities to play those guys together. Uh, but there is a concern for sure that Harden and Durant are playing too many minutes and having to shoulder so much of the playmaking burden, which is the benefit of bringing back Kyrie, and even if that's only for half the games, uh, it, it's, it's a huge lift for this team. Well, but there's kind of a push and pull there, right? Because you have to have enough games together to build chemistry, which was sure. something they struggled to get last season. But then at the same time, they want to make sure they're rested for when it counts. Kyrie, he did play last night. Kevin Durant did play. James Harden did not. Kyrie Irving, he was unhappy with the play blade made by Nasir Little when he drove for a ball. When he dove for a ball, it was near his ankle. So take a listen to that. I tried to get out of the way, but I, I just felt like that was just, it, it was unnecessary, you know, like for him to dive that far away with the ball I was just trying to get out the way but just unnecessary play I asked the refs just you know you just got to protect our, our our players out there it's just totally unnecessary I get Nasir wants to go for the ball but man that's just not a good play for basketball I could have broke my ankle or done something worse there's just no place in our game for it there's no place in our game for it. All right, so I'd like to bring back Richard and Perk. And considering Richard is already uh, rubbing the dome, I have to ask, was that a dirty play in your eyes, Richard? <laughs> this is going to crush me. This is going to crush me in a way that has never... Then we I've, welcome it. Come I've out. never been crushed on national television before. JJ, what is that terrible school you went to? What is your motto? What is your motto, JJ? <laughs> 
first to the floor. You guys dive after every ball. That's some <laughs> Duke basketball BS. And look, I know Kyrie. I understand when you get injured in that moment, but that is first to the floor. You know, and look, I love Kyrie. That's my guy. But Kai, I've seen you dive after balls in practice. Look, he's trying to get the ball. This is a guy that's trying to win a game. That's what this is. Right? Look, the Nets have not been playing great basketball of late, even though they've been winning because they have the talent. But unless you're willing to hustle like that, and yes, I am that sucks that Kyrie's. Yes, injuries can happen in basketball. Kyrie went up for a layup in the postseason, landed on somebody's ankle. That wasn't intentional. This right here is just a guy trying to win a game. And truth be told, the Nets need more guys like that on their mm. roster if they want to mm. be playing better basketball. Speak for your school. Mm. Speak for your school, JJ. Go ahead. Well, so I thought you were talking about our floor slapping, RJ. Yeah, so it's I was, the that's same why I was a little hustle. confused. It's the fake okay, hustle. All right. it's the same thing. Nasir Little went to UNC, by the way. Let's just acknowledge just, that. Just, Duke's I'm biggest about, rival. I'm talking about him. I'm talking about a Duke guy talking about diving on the floor. Is there's no right. place for that in the game of basketball? Look, I, I, I watched this game last night. I watched it live. I watched this highlight ten more times this morning. This was not a dirty play. Thank you. Nasir Little is a hungry young player trying to make a winning basketball play. And if you look at it from every single angle, he is diving for the ball on the side of Kyrie. He's not diving at his legs. I've seen guys make dirty plays before like this. This is not one of those. Yeah, and Kyrie jumped in front of him to try and stop him from <laughs> right. doing that. Right. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Go ahead, Perk. Guess we get to listen to you. <clears throat> well, I mean, look, RJ, this is not just in the Duke locker room. This is around all NBA locker rooms. What they say, 50? No, no, Jay, I'm not. Fix your face. Don't start turning red. I'm, I'm actually on y'all's side. Listen, here's the thing. You. In every NBA locker room, every coach talk about 50-50 balls. And every coach actually give you a reminder. The first guy to hit the floor is the guy that probably won't get his ankle turned or get a leg injury. That's why you preach dive on the floor for the loose ball. And, J.J., you made a great point. Here's the thing. This is a guy in Little, a young fella who's trying to establish himself in the league, trying to make a, a, a get a reputation for himself as a guy that plays hard, trying to – Everybody's watching them play. And then you have Kyrie and you have the Nets who were playing cool. This is why they lost the game in the Amen. first place. Because the Trailblazers the, the Trailblazers just played harder than them. And so I actually talked to my guy Chauncey Billups today. And I asked him about that play. And he was like, man, hell nah, man. Ain't nobody was trying to hurt Kyrie. Perk, you know that's what we preach. Dive on the floor for loose balls. That's what it is. Yeah, well, watching we it, it's We have no place in our game for... Soft play. <laughs> well, with that, no game place in the game for soft play. We serve Kevin Durant right now. Well, I, I think they should definitely be concerned with his minutes. But as you guys just talked about, Kevin Durant is a superstar. He's yes, a max he player. There's inherently going to be pressure on him. That has been exasperated this season for a few reasons. First of all, COVID, injuries. But really, the Nets have an unbalanced roster. They have three superstars or... Whatever the criteria is, guys, <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. But they have three star players. And then after that, there's this pretty significant drop off. And, uh, you know, because of Kyrie being only, only being available for two games all season, he's had to shoulder more minutes. Um, but look, his usage rate is slightly above his career average. It's not like when he's on the court, he's doing more than he, he normally does. The, the Nets are in the middle of five games in seven days right now. There's not a break in sight. They don't have a two-game break or two-day break in between games until January 27th and 28th. And then they go back out west for another long road trip. So there's really no end in sight for this team until you get to the All-Star break. Well, and James Harden didn't play, so it already seems that they're staggering their stars. But with KD and Harden, like we just saw in that graphic, they rank in the top three in minutes per game along with Fred Van Vliet, who's number one. Is this sustainable for the entire season? This is the benefit of, of bringing Kyrie back for road games. Um, if I'm the Nets, my strategy would be if, <laughs> look, if, if those three guys are healthy uh, for a road game, we're picking one of them to sit out the game and get some rest. Um, and certainly as you get past the All-Star break, you can be even more strategic and, and look for opportunities to play those guys together. Uh, but there is a concern for sure 
that Harden and Durant are playing too many minutes and having to shoulder so much of the playmaking burden, which is the benefit of bringing back Kyrie, and even if that's only for half the games, uh, it, it's, it's a huge lift for this team. Well, but there's kind of a push and pull there, right? Because you have to have enough games together to build chemistry, which was sure. something they struggled to get last season. But then at the same time, they want to make sure they're rested for when it counts. Kyrie, he did play last night. Kevin Durant did play. James Harden did not.